All right. Hello, and welcome to the second part of the organ identification uh, for the Unit 5 histology. Um, this one's going to focus more on the digestive tract, but there will be other slides in there as well. So why don't you take a moment and identify the organ at the tip of the pointer. All right, should have come up with epididymis, and we actually already have seen this um, slide in, or actually a similar, the same organ in quiz one. I just wanted to show you a different uh, look for this because we also have this look in our slide boxes. Um, epididymis would be up here, and the testis is down here. All right, I'll give you a moment. Okay, this is going to be the ovary, and um, you can tell that because you can see all of these primary follicles here. And for this class, we're calling uh, this a primary follicle as well as these uh, primary follicles. This is a primary follicle. The only time that we're going to see um, what we're going to call a mature follicle or graphene follicle is when you see this large antrum, which is that fluid filled space. Um, again, since you can see these e easily here, this would be the oocyte in the center, kind of this whole thing here. And then out here, you actually see the follicular cells, which are going to be creating um, or making estrogen as well as uh, pumping fluid into this uh, space and creating the antrum. All right, I'll give you a moment. Okay, this is the penis. And um, it's kind of a, a unique slide, but this whole area here is going to be the corpora cavernosum and it's cavernosum, it's actually cavernous, it's full of space and uh, blood will actually flow into this space and um, that's what causes the penis to get erect and then down here we can see the corpus spongiosum and that's going to contain the spongy urethra, which is all this um, space in here that's the lumen. And that's about it for this slide. Okay, I'll give you a moment. All right, you should have said esophagus. And the reason that we know that is we can see this stratified squamous epithelial tissue here and that's uh, really the only slide that we have this unit that has stratified squamous so you should be able to kind of easily identify that um, other identifiers for this is going to be the patchy submucosa I'm sorry the patchy muscularis mucosa which you can see like here um, those are kind of your two main identifiers. As far as tunics go, remember that the tunic goes from the epithelial layer. This is just mucus. So from the whole epithelial layer through the, uh, there's a small connective tissue layer here, and then all the way through the muscularis mucosa. That's all tunica mucosa. Tunica submucosa is going to be here. And then we have our tunica muscularis here, which is all this muscle layer. And again, um, if you can tell, we actually have two different layers. You can see it better over here. We have a layer that's cut transversely, meaning the fibers are coming out at you, and a layer that uh, is going longitudinally. And this, in this case, it's cut longitudinally. Um, and also happens to be the outer longitudinal muscle. So we have the inner circular muscle and the outer longitudinal muscle. Just remember that it doesn't um, 
always happen that way. So sometimes we'll actually see the um, circular muscle looking like this and the longitudinal muscle looking uh, like this. And that's just because of the, the way that the um, esophagus, in this case, was uh, sectioned. And then out here we're going to see tunica adventitia. It's actually tunica externa. This in, in particular is going to be adventitia. And you may also notice we actually have some skeletal muscle here. Um, there are parts of the esophagus that have skeletal muscle on the outside. Okay, I'll give you a moment. This is where things get a little bit trickier. This is going to be the colon. And the really big identifier for the colon is going to be this inner circular muscle that looks like somebody has taken their fingers or maybe a rake and just kind of raked through the muscle. You see all this um, space here where you actually have connective tissue. So that is a telltale sign that you are in the colon. Other things that identify this, we have a large submucosa. We have a thin but easily identifiable muscularis mucosa. And then we're going to see all of these white structures in the epithelial layer, the tunica mucosa, and those are all going to be goblet cells that are producing mucus. And the colon has um, a large amount of those, so we're going to see that a lot on the colon slide. All right, identify this organ. Okay, this is going to be the stomach, and um, I do. I think it actually looks kind of similar to the colon in terms of how it looks up here. Um, but just remember that you're looking for those goblet cells, so we don't see any of those goblet cells here. So that it helps us identify it as the stomach. In addition, we have the gastric glands um, that are kind of at the ends of the gastric pits. And we don't see those in the colon either. Um, again, we have a very prominent, sorry, uh, muscularis mucosa, part of the tunica mucosa. And then this is actually an arterial, but this here would be um, if you remember, the stomach has three layers of muscle in the tunica muscularis. The first one is the oblique muscle. And then the next layer down is going to be the circular muscle. And the next layer is going to be the longitudinal muscle. I just wanted to compare these since they do look pretty similar. Um, um, just so you can see that this here is... Uh, again, makes one of the major identifiers for the colon, even though these two um, epithelia or these two um, tunica mucosas look kind of similar. All right, I'll give you a moment. Okay, this is the trachea, and um, there are two things here that make it very obviously the trachea. The first is the PSCC that you see here. All right, it's got cilia on the top. Uh, the next, if you guys remember back from unit one, this is going to be the hyaline cartilage. So that's the uh, tracheal ring that kind of supports the um, structure of the tracheus, keeps it open. And then back here we have the trachealis muscle. All right, I'll give you a moment to identify the organ. This is the duodenum for uh, your class. You can put duodenum or small intestine. Uh, the way that you know this is small intestine is actually that um, you, can, you can see the difference here between the tunica mucosa, which is this dark purple, and the tunica submucosa, which is this lighter purple. And on some slides, it actually can be reversed where this is lighter and this is darker. But what you, you want to keep in mind is that there is a pretty stark color difference between the two tunics. And you cannot see 
the muscularis mucosa very clearly. That's actually one of the identifiers for the um, small intestine. It's hard to see it. Uh, so these would be the submucosal glands or Brunner's glands or duodenal glands. And then up here you would have the intestinal crypts and, um, and the villi. See if we like this one. All right, that's a villi like that. There's actually a Pyre's patch in this particular one. And then down here we have um, the two different muscles, muscle layers of the tunica muscularis. And then way out here we can actually see um, the serosa, which is part of that tunica externa, and in this case it's serosa. Okay, again, just wanted to compare um, on the left here we have the colon and on the right this is the duodenum or small intestine and the difference that you see here because it can look kind of similar um, is that you get that color change here and you can still see the glandular kind of appearance of the submucosal glands where here the submucosa looks just kind of a lot like loose connective tissue kind of random in its organization and then you also have again for the colon that striped looking uh, circular uh, muscle and in here you get the um, the two different well basically you don't get that right you have the um, inner circular layer which in this case is cut longitudinally and the outer longitudinal muscle which in this case is cut transversely well, I hope that was helpful.